Ladies and gentlemen, Road to Champs. We got that boy, Ken Dog. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome in. Back in the Hex Quarters. Well, this I is... Mean, Go ahead. I feel like it... It's it's kind of weird to me because I, I feel like here, like, the Hex Quarters seem, like, crazy. And like, I've been there before, but, like, I don't know. Like, it hasn't, like, set in for me. I haven't played here. I haven't played out of here. I haven't done anything out of here. So, like, for me, I'm just kind of ready to like get started because like, like I said it's kind of new to me I'm just used to the downtown thing and yeah, I so, to, I'm special to the team so like for me it's just like get that special vibe I guess from it yeah you'll get it eventually <laughs> it takes a little bit to grow I yeah. don't really love the floors the floors always were the, the big thing that that I didn't like but I mean we played here in MW 2019 mm. Cold War were we here in yeah in Vanguard uh, a little bit of Vanguard, and I think after the Vanguard season was when we when we moved out. So yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice. It's a sure. it's a more like comfortable vibe. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I like the offices just because like you guys have your own room here. Yeah. You're in the middle of fucking La La Land, just in the middle of the room playing. But yeah, you'll learn to love it. Trust me. But Maybe first question for you, Ken. Yeah. Do you miss playing against me? We've had some heated <laughs> battles throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say yeah, probably. I feel like. You always like to play against, like, I guess, all of the COD greats. And for me, it, it's always good to beat them. You always want to play against them. You always want to, like, I guess, achieve what they did. So for me, like, not having, I guess, like, there's, like, I guess, like, clay left. But not getting to play against, like, no the U's, Porter, the Damons. Damon. Like, so I, I, I would say I miss it for sure. Do you remember the first time that we played against each other? I remember it. No. Well, uh, yeah. You probably actually don't remember it. No, I swear, I swear okay. to you. What, what would you say the first time you played each other? A.W. Okay. okay. It was <laughs> you, Dylan. <laughs> it's actually fucking Man. comedy because the first time we played each other, I'm pretty sure we were on like side stations, mm -hmm. like in the middle of the middle of the venue. I remember yeah. it was you, Dylan, Assault. Yeah, and we had space on our team. And space. Mm -hmm. And you guys were just us. Mm -hmm. Damn, you didn't know I had the memory nah, like yeah, that? I didn't, I didn't think you had the memory like that. But the funny thing is about that, we were on the side station. They didn't even have our accounts. So we're playing. I, I remember to this day, I was playing on, like, Donnie's account or something like that. But, yeah, I mean, that that right there was, like, a kind of like a, I won't say like a wake-up moment, but it was, like, the first time we were playing, like, a, I guess, one of the top teams. And I'm, like, new kid. I've obviously played against y'all online, but it's, like, <laughs> at Atlanta, it was just completely different. Especially because side station, I got people all around me. I'm just, like, what is going on? I yeah. don't remember people being around. I thought there it was, was like, like, no, there, there was, was like, hella people. There was hella people. Because I remember it was just like, maybe I was locked in, but I just remember yeah. like us. No, the, it was just us on the stage, but like looking at the people that were like watching from a distance is just like, I don't know. For me, it was just weird. Because I, I, like, where I'm from, stuff like that was like weird initially. I'm like, what are these kids doing? Like, <laughs> I don't know. AW was the first time we played. Yeah. And then, so you're, I mean, your like first breakout year was, was World War II. Mm -hmm. And you were fucking filthy. I mean, you had our number. Uh, I don't know if I did most of the time. I was telling a, a clip the other day or telling my stream the other day, like, there was a time where we played against y'all, I think, in a league match, and it was on London Docks. We were up, like, probably 100 points. And I kill you and Krim, and I shoot both of your bodies, <laughs> and I swear to God, we didn't get a point for the rest of the map. Or a kill. We literally got comebacked on. It was, like, one of the craziest comebacks. Like, you can't shoot bodies, Nah, man. you can't shoot bodies. And then there, I was bodies. like, I'm not shooting nobody's ever again, bro. <laughs> that was like, it? Yeah, that was it. I was like, I'm never shooting their bodies ever again. We literally didn't get a point or a kill for us. I'm like, Jesus, these guys just world stars. Turned up. Yeah. But so besides the process interview that you did, the, mm. the fans haven't really got like a sit down formal interview with you. So yeah. now that you've joined Optic, talk to me a little bit about what your expectations were coming into the year. And mm. then now that you've already brought home Optic a chip, how those expectations have changed or like just evolved. Yeah. I feel like coming into the team, well, obviously on, in the offseason, I was expecting to go whatever team I could win at. So coming to this team, I knew, like, we could win, we should win. So for me, the expectation was just only to win. Um, it was kind of just, like, a new step for me because I'm finding new teammates, especially three new teammates. So, um, yeah, it was, just, it, was, it was just a win, and then we won a championship, and it felt good because, like, I delivered what I promised to deliver. Uh, obviously, want to win more, and that's – the next step but i think the expectation definitely changed because right, right now we're not playing as well so it's kind of like how do we bounce back and how do i i guess fill that void of like the, the fans feeling like the team just fell off yeah so i guess I, i'm gonna segue off that a little bit but so you've played on other big teams i mean you were on thieves 
Mm. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how, because you, you had some bumpy patches with them as well. Through Vanguard, you guys had a pretty bad online stage. Yeah. But then you came out and won the next major, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, talk to me about how, like, the social pressure, I guess. Is it any different from, from Thieves to Optic, or is it just... No, I would say here it's actually... Well, I would say it's definitely a little, a little pressure. Um, I usually don't let, like, outside stuff affect me uh, just because I'm so honest in the room with my teammates that I expect the same honesty from them. So, like, if they feel like I'm doing something terrible or playing terrible, I want them to be honest about it, and mm-hmm. I'm going to do it vice versa. So... For me, we've been all honest, and I think at this team, it's been way more clear-cut of, like, us letting out what we think each other is, like, really bad at or what we're good at, stuff like that. So, uh, for me, like, I've always been confident this year. No matter our, like, lows, we obviously had this is probably the lowest low. But for, for me, it's like the conversation we have are still good. So, I'm still super confident. And that's one of my favorite parts about teaming with, like, Shotzi in specifics is that like, he, he's brutally honest, mm-hmm. and I don't know if he does that, like, on purpose or if that's yeah. just how he is as a person, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> he, he's, like, such a great mind for COD. And, oh, yeah. But he's such a great teammate, too, where he'll, like, keep it real with you and be like, you're fucking this up. Exactly. And, and I, I love that about him uh, in general. So I feel like Same. you two probably bounce off each other really well. Yeah, I mean, I feel like coming to the team, Ant was kind of the one person I was kind of, like, ready, like, I guess – pick his mind on like how you wanted to play COD because playing against him you kind of know like he's impactful mm-hmm. uh it's kind of just like how he thought about how to play COD and me and him are on the same page of how to play I feel like our pace is on the same page it's just like I feel like in the game it definitely feels a little off sometimes when me and him are now on the same sides of the map mm-hmm. and I think that's like why we're, in- why we're inconsistent right now so I talked to Brandon a little bit uh I talked to him actually last week so you, at that point you guys were one and four now mm-hmm. Uh, you guys have lost to Boston, which a lot of people were obviously upset about. And yeah. then the Toronto series, which, again, just tough break on the control, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but talking to Brandon, how has your guys' perspective changed through this low point? <laughs> uh, has it – that you kind of touched on it, but has there been animosity? Mm. Or is it kind of just still trying to work towards that goal of, of fixing and riding the ship? I think after – the Boston loss, there was a definitely a little bit of animosity, uh, as expected. I was super, super heated because, yeah, we were one and four or whatever, but, like, a lot of the losses, there were so many, like, small, minimal mistakes that we could have fixed and just, like, I guess kind of not, like, super focused mistakes. Like, we're dying to stuff with, like, the streaks in the air, just random stuff like that, and I'm just like, okay, we lost to the worst team, in my opinion, and this is just not, like, and I think heated arguments are good for a team just because of the fact that that just shows that people care. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, I just don't get to the point where we're arguing to the point, like, arguing is to argue. I feel like we actually have a point, and we kind of have, like, good talks on what we actually think we need to work on. So for me, uh, there definitely was some, some good, 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 like, talks. But I think a lot of the times, like, our talks are just going in, in circles because of the fact that like, we're making the same mistakes over and over, and that's why we keep losing. That's just simple. And so. that's the most frustrating exactly. times when, like, you go over the shit, and then you make the same mistake, and it's like, oh, we went yeah, over this. we just like, went over this. So it's kind of feeling like we're like, doing too much bother because, like, people are overthinking and stuff like that. It's actually funny you say that because we had JP on the show last night, the breakdown, mm-hmm. and, and I was like, do you think it, it's over because we had that problem in – Vanguard and a little bit in the MW2, but like we would just sit there and watch yeah. VOD, watch VOD, and it would like make us tweak in the game because mm. we're like, we're, we're thinking in our brains about the VOD while you're trying to play the map. And it's like, I can't push this cut because now I'm going to flip them. Yeah, exactly. But sometimes you just got to push the cut and you just fucking gotta go. pop a two Yeah. and just put them in a blend. So it's like, I, I feel that. And it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that because over VODing is a, a big issue that I feel like it doesn't really get touched on by Definitely. the community because no. they don't understand like, so the same as overplaying. Like, you can play too much. Like, even when you're having a bad stage, you don't play more because of the fact that, like, if you make the mistakes more and more, imagine if you play three scrams and we talk about the same mistake three times. Like, I feel like at that point, people are going to piss. Like, you keep calling me out. I get yeah. into this. Like, for me, I don't feel like we have many, like, big mistakes. We make so many small mistakes in the map that, like, like I said, we went over, we talked about, like, even in our last match, like, or the Boston match, like, Damon went over something right before the map, and then the map started, and we did it. And it's like, wow. what can you say about that? I can't say anything except we got to just do it, bro. Yeah. So looking outside in, mm-hmm. uh, everybody in the community 
it always talks of about how you're very good in the team talks, you're a leader. Yeah. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about your role on the team and, and how you kind of have been, have you been like directing most of the time in a lot mm -hmm. of the team talks? Yeah, I would say I'm always the first to talk. I think at this point, people expect me to talk even after the map, so it's kind of like awkward when I don't talk. Uh, but I don't even see myself as like a, a, the leader. Uh, I think I just like happen to be like a player coach type of thing where I'm just always in the VOD talking before. Um, I just have a really good feel for the game that like I could just feel in the moment in the map when something's off or somebody did something. So I just got to go back in the VOD and see what happened and then explain it. Um, but yeah, I think that's my role is just like the basically get us all on the same page. Cause like I said, me and Ant have the same mind for the game. Uh, I just do a lot of talking. Ant rarely talks unless he like really, really is like frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, That's the Damon. Yeah, unless he's like super, super mad. But for me, that's like my role. I I like try to direct the team and respawns and S and D. Not really too much. Uh, my thing in S and D is just like I feel like my comms are really good when like we have man like di like our man advantages are not good right now. So that's the one thing I'm working on is like trying to get us. On the same page on how to play man advantages which like yo ain't. get to me or yeah like just sprint to me like, or like if, I'm, if i'm watching like yo you should get to ant here blah 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 yeah um but yeah that's kind of my role just like to be the voice that speaks and kind of direct like how we want to play the game this mm -hmm. one's a little bit more fun okay. describe each of your teammates and coaches in one word let's go down the list let's see jesus start with shots shots and I'll give you, see, we both team with them. So you yeah. go and then I'll go. Okay, let's see. And or I'll go, you go, either one. What I, this is going to come off bad, but like a creature. <laughs> but I don't mean it in a way of like a bad creature. It's just like a mysterious creature. That's kind of how I think it in my head. Like he's just like, he's a person. I don't know. He's hilarious. He just has his own moments. I would say goofball. Goofball? Yeah, because he's like, he's like one of the smartest cod minds like that you'll play with like he knows exactly like what's going on what to do mm -hmm. he makes the right play a, a large majority of the time and he'll just do some crazy shit yeah but then like outside of the game he's just that's why i call him a creature because he does like crazy stuff in game but he won't ever express it in the moment i'm like i'm watching the vibe back like what the you just did like a 360 <laughs> off the top you know what i mean so 360 like, dolphin dive yeah. hit the ledge and killed someone like that's why i call him a creature because i'm like how weird can you be to like not even <laughs> i'm i'm calling out something not even react do exactly i do that i'm like oh like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. doing, I'm doing something uh but 100%. i know what you mean he's like nah he does he'll, he'll react sometimes mm, for he'll, sure. he'll do his yo <laughs> that's that's like his go-to yeah. like yo <laughs> right, yeah, for sure. All right, uh, next up, let's do Brandon. Brandon. Hmm. Jesus, why is this so hard? Um, Brandon. Let's do. I'll just go like laser. I feel like Brandon. I'll just say laser, just because obviously you know Brandon has a good shot. But I feel like you don't really notice how good his shot is, and see so like what? Like I watch so much VOD, and I'm watching his POV, and I'm just like, he kind of hit some shots that I'm like impressed with, I guess. Uh, a lot of the time. So I was just He's got like, a straight shot. Yeah, like a laser beam. I would say intense for Brandon. Brandon's a very intense teammate sometimes. Oh, he... That, sometimes that's, he's that, intense. That's a, that's a good word. Because, like, Brandon, I feel like behind the scenes, like, people get to see him and he's goofy and, like... Mm. But, like, when shit hits the fan, like, he can get intense, you know? Like, yeah. he, he cares a lot. And we've already had this talk with him, but, like, he would kind of compartmentalize that. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been trying to get him to, to not do and be more vocal, and, and that's what I heard he's been doing. Yeah. Uh, which makes me really happy just because, like, his progression as a player, because he's so talented. No, oh, for sure. Uh, and now I hear that he's, like, getting in on the team talks, always trying to improve and shit, so yeah. I love to hear that. I mean, me and him got on Discord and watched back, map, like, maps, just to kind of, like, he get on the same page with me as well and, like, him understand how I want him to play, I guess, as a player. So I feel like... Brandon this year, like I said, we teamed before on OJLA and it was not good, but this year has been S tier. I have no complaints. That's great to hear. Yeah. All right, next up, let's go AG. I can't, I'm not going to jump in on these that's ones. The, I call him a clown. He's like the class clown. I call, I'm like, he, so I call him like a, like, a goof, like a goofball. I'll take him to goofball word or clown. AG is hilarious to me. Like, oh my God. Yeah, I don't know. Me and him just like have good laughs all the time, even when we're scrimming, even in matches. I know he's talking shit. Yeah. Every yeah. scrim just. And even just some stuff he says, like he called people like, just like their names aren't even their names. He just 
He's a clown. Uh, he's definitely hilarious. He can keep the vibe up at times. He can definitely be serious. But uh, if there's anybody to laugh with, most of the time it's him. Comedic relief? Mm -hmm. All right, next, JP. JP. Um, I'll go with JP. I'll go nonchalant. Nonchalant? Mm -hmm. I say robot. Robot? Yeah, okay, that boy JP that. is locked in. You, you look over to, to his monitor. He's got, like, some stats page pulled up. He's like... Dude, we're fucking a 45% break percentage on P3 Karachi. Like, no, yo, JP is locked in. I just on walk the in stats. some days, he's just riding on the whiteboard. It's like <laughs> Karachi P2 to P3. We cannot, like, it's just like 2% win. I'm like, damn. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would say nonchalant because, like, I feel like he just has a nonchalant, like, personality and, like, he can be very monotone. But you can tell, like, when he's pissed and when he's not. But it's just like, it's the same expression. Yeah, every time. same expression. Yeah. All right, mm. last up, DB3. Hmm. DB3. I'll go first. Yeah. Volcano. Okay. Because same thing with like Ant. Mm -hmm. DB3, I, I don't know how he is as a coach, only yeah. as a player, but he would let shit build up, build up, build up, let that pressure build, and then right whenever we'd fuck up a rotation or yeah. something for the last time, it would just erupt. Like, he would fucking snap. So I'm calling Damon the Volcano. The volcano? I, I, I can do that. I, that, was, that was the same thing. Like I was going to say like straightforward because – he will just give it to you. Like, you're playing like ass, or like, y'all are playing terrible today, or like this and that. And definitely he has a volcano because, like, he'll have his mic muted for like two maps. And then next map, he'll be like, ah, uh, man, I don't know. We're just absolutely trolling. That rotation on the P1 on the Karachi first map, I just don't know what we're doing. I'm just like, <laughs> Jesus, this guy just came out. What he are just, we doing? Yeah. But I, I, lo I love Damon. He's hilarious. So AG and Ant both grew up and they were talking about they always wanted to play four optics. Were you the same, or did you just want to play for whoever, I mean, like you said, whichever team would give you the best chance of winning? I think growing up or coming up in, like, I guess in COD, I wanted to just play with people, not on the teams. I didn't really look at the orgs as, like, a, a big thing back then. I just kind of don't play with certain players. Like, uh, Proof used to be, like, a guy that I, like, loved watching back in the day. So that was kind of, like, the person I kind of based my – gameplay around and like looked at and like anytime he played i watched so it was more like players and team damn that's crazy you modeled after proof yeah yeah damn i never knew that yeah. see that that that's good insight right yeah. there that boy cannon <laughs> that's crazy so t it was players over orgs over always orgs, yeah because like obviously i wanted to play for certain teams i just liked watching like i had favorite teams but i don't think i really looked at it as like i wanted to be on this org one day um Maybe like content wise, YouTube wise, but as like to play on, I feel like it was more players. Are there any retired players that you didn't get the chance to play with that you would have liked to? I think the number person, number one person on my list is actually Damon. Uh, no cliche, just because he's on our team, but it's always been Damon. I feel like me and him at least play a similar role uh, on our respective teams that we played on, and I feel like me and him have the same mindset for the game. You guys so. definitely do. Like, yeah. I mean, again, I'm not on the inside, but like. That's the way that you're described mm. uh, by your teammates is like the same way that I would describe Damon. Damon like, yeah. he would, he's a gap filler, always in the best spot, exactly. but he also has insane, like, gunny and individual skills. So he's like, he's like just a great package to have on yeah. your team. He's doing everything right. Like, if you're fucking something up, he's kind of like correcting it on the other side. So it's yeah. like, I could see that that same type of like play style from, from you and him. So for sure. You're the most recent champs winner on the team. Yeah. Won two years ago with the Thieves. Two of our boys are hunting for their first, AG and Brucey. Mm -hmm. And obviously got his uh, online 2019. Is there yeah. any wisdom that you're trying to pass down to them now that you've won more recently to, to try and lock in the ring for, for this season? Yeah. I mean, we had talks, like I said, after our, our th losses. And our last loss, I kind of just, like, got real with the team. Like, I'm going to be real with y'all, like, we're not in a spot to win right now. We're not playing like winners. And I was like, I, I, I came off kind of egotistical, but I was like, as a winner, we're going to one of the biggest events of the year. And like, we got to start acting like it. Like, we, we have this mindset that like, we're better on land. And I, I've always had that mindset, I'm better on land. But it's the fact that like, our practice sometimes isn't even productive online. So like, we're about to come home with no, no matches, no kind of intensity, no kind of like, I guess, pressure. And we're going to be scrimming. So, like, we need to come with a different mindset after the tournament. Because, like, obviously I'm looking to win Major 4, but I'm look also looking at the bigger picture. Like, we're going into the biggest tournament of the year. I feel like Major 4, I mean, you look at, like, 
just champs winners in general. Yeah. And yeah, there's some that don't win the tournament before, but mm. I feel like in recent history, it's like whoever places good at the major before champs just sets themselves up. Exactly. Like you come home with a win or like a top two or a top mm. three, you're like, okay, we're, we're right there and we can build on that. You come home with like a top eight yeah. and there's no hope on the team. It's like, I feel like that goes a long way. So Exactly. That, and that's why I feel like... We're not in the worst spot for the tournament because of the fact that we're in like we're in a spot to like get as many matches in as possible and get some momentum. Uh, but I think we're just a great team. Like I said, in general, we don't really make big mistakes, we make really small ones. But I think it's just a mindset thing um, for us. So my wisdom for the team is be the mindset. And I kind of already spoke to them like we got to get in a different mindset, especially when we get home. Yeah. All this like excuses and stuff like that of like uh, we can't do this because of this and like it, like going into the biggest tournament, you don't really have much time to fix those things. We don't really have a pressure in a match or like in that moment for you to do it. You just got to do it in practice. So yep. that's kind of like the main focus for me to get the team in the right mindset. What would it mean for you to bring the green wall a ring? It would probably mean everything. Cause like I said, I came here to win and that's what we've done already. And I feel like the next step is the bigger, bigger win, which is obviously champs. Um, I think it, it'll mean a lot just because of the fact that like, I won a chance for two different teams. I think that's also a big thing. You're going for three? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the Green Wall has, has done nothing but support me since I've been here. I feel like it's kind of like changed their perspective around me as well as I've done content here. So I feel like they well, deserve- You're always the villain. Exactly. Kylo Ken. They deserve nothing more than like a champs ring for yeah. sure. Shouts out to Ken Dog. Thank yes, you sir. for joining us. We'll no be rooting problem. for you for the last two. Thank you.